Hey everybody, Chris here. Just a quick note before we get started. We don't do this often, but we're having a flash sale this weekend, Labor Day weekend. So if you happen to be listening when this episode comes out from Friday, September 3rd to Monday, September 6th at whatever time I remember to turn it off or Lana remembers to turn it off, we'll be having a weekend flash sale on all of our essential elements products. That means crag kits, boulder bags, uh, finger files, circuit tape, and our essential elements apparel, the super popular crew neck sweatshirt and the unisex tee. You can find that link right there in the show notes in your pocket supercomputer, or you can go to powercompanyclimbing.com slash specials. All right, let's get into it. What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Chris Hampton, and I'm sitting here in lovely Lander, Wyoming, with my friend Justin Brown, owner of Rhino Skin Solutions, and uh, Smith Rock local. Can we say Smith Rock legend? Are we allowed to say that totally. now that you're like super famous? <laughs> yeah, probably. I mean, I was a legend <laughs> from day one. Uh, Started a legend. No, barely. Uh, <clears throat> definitely local. Yeah. And we're going to talk about what, when, how to train for Smith Rock. Is it Smith Rock or Smith Rocks? I'm not sure. I think it's Smith Rock. I know the the Red Rock folk mm-hmm. get upset if you say Red Rocks. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's called Smith Rock because uh, it's describing one formation. Ah. It's kind of a cohesive unit. Got it. And I've never been to Smith Rock. Um, it's a place I absolutely need to go um if nothing else just for the history of it Mm -hmm. um so for me this episode is kind of special because i get to pick your brain as a curious you know listener instead of having my own input on all of this stuff it just occurred to me we're both from ohio so if you're from ohio you probably call it smith's rock (laughs) Because they personify everything. <laughs> totally. Smith's Rocks. Smith's Rocks. <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit about the character of the climbing at mm-hmm. Smith. And this is someplace, if you're a sport climber, you've not been to Smith, like me, which means you're slacking, you should go simply because it's the birthplace of American sport climbing. Mm-hmm. The history is deep there. Yeah. So, yeah. The history, trip. uh, it goes through all of the iterations of what sport climbing is in America. It goes, it has bolt wars. It has bolting wars. It has, uh, like red tag and somebody steals the route from whoever bolted it. And it has drilled pockets and filled pockets and redrilled pockets. So it's got all of that stuff. Uh, but it's also the best, style the best example of the type of rock climbing that smith rock is uh it's super long unbroken faces that are highly technical and bouldery Mm -hmm. um and so you can go other places with similar styles like lander has similar style lander's a little bit steeper than smith in general um but you could go to the new uh, also steeper, but it's got a lot like endless wall has a ton of vertical rock climbing as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you can go to Serrana in Spain, similar type of holds, similar type of rock climbing. But I think Smith rock is, uh, above is, I'm not really sure the saying. I think Smith rock is a little bit better, uh, because it has unbroken faces. There's not right. real rests anywhere. Right. Um, like ledges or giant pockets or anything. And do like at the new, we talked about this in our new river episode. Uh, a lot of times you'll get these like big horizontal mm-hmm. 
you know, even if it's just a hold, it'll be a big horizontal. Do you get that kind of thing at Smith or is it just a continuous pockets and edges? Yeah. Um, you won't get any like giant horizontal rests, but there are routes that have big pockets that you can rest in. Got there's, it. there's not a lot of like knee bars. There's not a lot of nowhere to hide, nowhere to hide. No. If you have a big pocket, um, for your hands, most likely you're not going to have great feet. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're a little taller, sometimes you can kind of stretch out and get from good hold to good hold. Yep. But for the most part, it's just amazing technical sustained rock climbing, um, with boulder problems. Got it. So if I were planning a trip to Smith and I, you know, I, I had time to train for it, should I be training like full crimp? Should mm -hmm. I be training pockets? Should I be training um, hip mobility? Do those mm -hmm. sound like the right things to focus on to you? Yeah. Um, crimp strength is definitely pretty important. For the majority of my Smith rock climbing career, I was an open-handed crimper. Mm. Um, I don't know few kids are calling it finger drags or whatever, but it was, <laughs> it was definitely open hands. Yeah. Uh, rarely was I biting down full strength. Got it. Um, so are they more flat or slopey or are they in cut? Uh, they're flat nubbly crimpers. Got it. Um, sometimes on the more, uh, climbed routes, they're, they're a little bit rounded off. Mm. they will be kind of a slimper, like a I like the slimper. Of this. Um, but, and then there's pockets, of course, yep. of varying depths. Um, but for me, it was much better just to climb open-handed as much as possible. Totally. And then if there's like an obscene crux, you just crimp down real hard, uh, fold that hand over, get through it, and then back to open hands. Um, yep. the, the half crimp thing, some people really like. I'm not a big fan of the half crimp. For mm -hmm. me, it's open or closed. Yep. Style-wise, it seems like it's mostly vert to lightly overhanging, mm -hmm. technical, you know, hips to the wall as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like that sort of style. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I, it's, not, it's not like your general gym set vertical rock climbing, though. Mm -hmm. um, it's... Uh, there's tons of feet everywhere. They're extremely small uh, at times, but you really can find a sequence for almost any size with admission of a few routes, especially in sure. the higher ends. Um, do those footholds, the the small but lots of footholds, do they get polished like on limestone or granite? What type of rock not, exactly it's, um, is Smith? It's a, uh, oh, you put me on the spot. I should know this. It's a volcanic tuft. Okay. Uh, so, uh, a volcano exploded in, uh, Prineville and put ash everywhere. Prineville is like 30 minutes away, hmm. put whatever, 600 feet of ash down. And then it got compacted over the years, covered and compacted. And then it got washed away and revealed Smith rock. Ah, so it's nice. this, it's this like glassy, the holes aren't glassy. The holes are extremely rough. But the but if you like zoomed in on the little particles, they're like very glassy, right? Which kind of lends to this isn't answering your question at all. Lends to its unique or your unique need for like conditions and skin humidity to mm. be proper, because the rock isn't uh, forgiving, right? Because it, like just think if you put your hand on a pane of glass and you yeah. have moisture on your hand, it's gonna be slippery on the right, glass. Right, right, right. So, so lower humidity for most people is a lot better yeah. there. Um, so do the feet polish up like that? Are they often those little, you know, crystals they, of glass or whatever? They do polish up. Uh, there's like xenoliths in the wall and those will polish up because those are the footholds that you have to use. Got it. Uh, but with that being said, they're still usually pretty prickly and you can stand on them. Like there's this one route um, lucky pigeon that has a foothold that everybody calls the chocolate chip mm -hmm. and it's 
it's just this tiny little pebble that sticks out of the wall and it's got the little curly cue on it mm. and that's what your foot just sticks to you just plaster your your shoe on there and it just kind of sticks yeah i love it I, it's so polished though but it stays i think that's a thing a lot of people have a hard time finding in the gym mm -hmm. um and it's something you really have to search for you know um we sell a line of tiny super polished feet that mm -hmm. you know could be used to train for something like this um, but if you're in the gym a lot of times you you can just choose, it's going to make things harder, but you can choose to use tiny little parts of holds yep. or bolt holes or, That's what I was you know, say, yeah. try really hard to stand on horrible things instead of just flopping your foot over this giant foot that's in the gym. Yeah, you know? that's extremely helpful for Smith. And, and honestly, the bolt holes for some routes are exactly what you're standing on. They're just yeah. these shallow little divots mm -hmm. that you just kind of have to let the rubber settle into. Um, there's some climbing hold company that makes their like real shallow holds, convex holds with polished little, uh, dots on them. Yep. And those are pretty good. Yeah. I've seen a few of those. Yep. Cause so. then you have to rely mm -hmm. on the texture and, but mm -hmm. trust that there's a bit coming out and yep, those totally. seem to be pretty helpful. Yeah. So look for bad feet. Bad um, feet. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times at the gym, a good, a good training method at the gym would be to use really good handholds mm -hmm. and the worst feet on the wall. It doesn't have to be a set route or anything, right? but just try and like drop that heel and see how well your, your shoe sticks and just settle into the holds. For yep. me at Smith, that was 90% of the battle was trusting the feet. Yep. Learning to get your weight there. So yep. you're not pulling on the holds so yeah, hard. Yeah. Just settling in. Yep. Are most of the moves, you said there are lots of feet everywhere, mm -hmm. are most of the moves like big pulls between holds? Are there lots of tiny intermediates that could be used if mm -hmm. you're a smaller climber? Yeah, there's usually a lot of intermediates. Yeah. Got it. Um, there'll be, you know, there's lots of pockets and decent edges, but the if, if Smith Rock has like fresh rock, it's a lot of like nubbly pinches and crimps with thumb catches mm. and so you'll have a route that's that's well climbed and all the holds have become flat edges and pockets that have been reinforced or whatever deepened or yeah just natural sharp pocket but in between there will be like thumb catch edges that you can kind of bump yourself up to get to the position. Got it. So when they're pre before chalk, they might look like non holds yep. until somebody's found Oh, my fingers will settle in here like this. And then it becomes a chalked up hold that other people. Yeah. Use. Yeah. And sometimes stuff breaks. <clears throat> and so the yep. sequence won't go, but then somebody will be like, Oh yeah, there's like a pinch over here. And, so it'll re-go. Got it. So yeah. like I see the photos and it looks like these completely blank walls. So it's mm -hmm. interesting to hear that there are all these tiny little features that you can work with. Tons of features. Yeah. 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 And it's such a gritty rock that you can literally stand on anything. There's, you can, if there's a hold. Uh, once you a, believe it. Once you believe it. Yeah. If there's a hold that is like for your feet, that's a grain of sand. If you just put your foot on that and just trust it, mm. just like settle into it, put your weight onto it, it it usually will hold. That's cool. Yeah. I, I love that style of climbing because at first it's scary as hell, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and so difficult and so pumpy. But then once you learn how to do it and learn how to stand on your feet, it's it amazing. becomes this really yeah. delicate dance that's so much fun. Yeah, I think when I first met you and talked with you about a training program, I was always like, I'm just terrible at standing on my feet. I need help standing on my feet. And I don't, I think that might've been me just like sandbagging myself because of the climbing area yep. that I was used to. Cause if I go to the red or even the new or maple, it's like, if you can't whatever. stand on the feet in the red, then <laughs> you got, you got other <laughs> then <there's issues>. trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I could see that. Like you're in an area where you're standing on the worst feet possible. So it yeah. feels like you're really bad at it. But when you go to other areas, the feet are pretty damn big. Yeah, and I see other, some of the better rock climbers that come through and it looks like they're just attached to the wall so well. Right. They have that like 
in, in baseball, you have that like athletic stance. Yeah. And it looks like they're doing that on the wall and just standing there right. with all their weight on their feet. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like Paige Clawson style. <laughs> yeah. How do how are you standing on your feet so well right there? It doesn't it doesn't make sense to me. And then I get up there and I'm all like shaky with sewing machine leg going like I don't know how how my feet work. They yeah. don't work at all. Yeah, so that that's good beta. Like spend a lot of time really figuring out how to stand on your feet. Yeah, I think grab big holds in your gym or even outside during your warm-ups. This is a really good one. Um, there's like this 510 called nine gallon buckets and it, you basically climb it every single day and, um, giant holds. And I would just use the worst feet I could on my way up mm. just to like get the footwork Smart. going and get that like weight transfer working. Yeah. Cause you could just stand in the giant jugs you're right. using for your hand, but that's Jug, useless. Jugs are off for feet. Yep. I for like sure. It. I like yep. it. Always. So part of the training for Smith Rock is uh, it's super painful to climb there. Um, You have, if you like rock climb outside when it's cold, you have screaming barfies. You get those from the pockets in the crimpers as well at Smith. So it's really important to uh, like prime your hands for that, prime your fingertips for Mm -hmm. it. And so there's two methods. Uh, You can either hang on really small holds. Uh, When I was like really performance rock climbing at Smith, I would have a piece of Luan plywood that I cut. And so it's like four and a half mils and I'd hang on that just as hard as I could Mm. and then let go. And, you know, that's some good skin abuse or, uh, the evil Lopez board has those sharp edges on it. That's a good one to use, uh, or find like some old school hang boards or some of the smaller pockets on like the tension board works well. Mm -hmm. And, hang two fingers in there uh, or stack fingers in there and just try and put a lot of weight on them. And then when you let go, you'll get that screaming barfy kind of pain going on yep. and it will go away with enough practice. It will go away. Totally. If you don't want to do that, you can just bite your fingertips <laughs> like really I hard, like really bite them and then let go. And that actually works well too. I'm gonna it like make a, legit works well. I'm going to make a fingertip biting training plan for people. Yeah. I think it's a, it's like, it's real. That's real. I have, I'm not, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus there. (laughs) I have to show you these things I've got. I pulled them off of Todd Skinner's old system wall. Mm -hmm. They were these pretty coarse, uh, really sharp edges. Mm -hmm. Um, these squares, these like poured squares, really heavy, old plastic, but really coarse and sharp just edges. Tons of sand in them. Yep, and I yeah. I love them. I think for I remember those. Just getting my skin ready. Did he make those or tips ready. himself, or were they from like so. Nicros? Yeah, I think they're Nicros or something. Yeah. You know, one of the older companies. One of those. Yeah, yeah, they'd be perfect for it. I'm gonna yep. have to remake those and market them to everyone going to Smith. Yeah, like a ton of weight, as much weight as you can deal with, just to get just it's painful. Yeah, and you don't want to get up there and like put your finger in a pocket. And then like and be like, I cannot hold that. That hurts too much. You do you think it's do you think it's fingers. strictly like a mental pain tolerance thing, or do you think it's partially that there's an actual response in your skin? I think it's just a mental pain tolerance thing. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I think your skin's plenty strong. Yeah. Uh, what are the good months? Like when months. if if people are going to plan a trip to Smith, they've got twelve weeks to train. Mm-hmm. When is the month they should plan their trip for? Yeah. Spring, um, fall. January is really good. We call it mm. Jun- January. Nice. Um, it's usually somewhere between 15 and 40 degrees outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the main area gets direct sun. And so you can just climb all day in the sunlight and have pretty good pretty good day, pretty good session. It's super grippy, uh, cause the humidity is so low, but the days are short. You can climb from like 10 till two 30. Yep. And then it's just frozen on either end of that. Yeah. Um, if you want just nice long days, I would say October, November is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes November is a little wet, but it's still the desert. So 
a little wet's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, and then September's a little warm still. September's like gully season if you want to. So we have the agro gully and that's kind of the highest concentration of hard routes and it's the steepest part of Smith. So it's pretty popular. And uh, that it would be like September is really good. Um, you want you want like 45 degrees overnight and 65 degrees in the day or 70 degrees in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, so the rock's cold. Yeah, rock's cold. We get a little breeze around like 1030, which is like prime sending mm. time. You're setting people up here. Yeah, 1030. There's going to be a record number of sends in Smith coming oh, great. soon. That'll be a record number of broken <laughs> holds. <laughs> um, is there a good spring? Like yeah, what's, spring what's time. That look like? Let's see. Uh, January is good. February is usually pretty wet. March is pretty wet. Um, but the end of March and April, I'd say. Okay. Yep. Awesome. So if you're like super project mode in the main area, go in mm-hmm. January. Yep. Um, if it's more like a, I'm just going to go climb some volume, have fun, you know, learn the history and climb a bunch of pitches. It's more typical fall months, October, yep. November. Yeah, exactly. And the gully is kind of stretches those agro gully stretches that out a little bit. And we have, there's a couple gullies, but like, yeah, agro is the place you're going to go project. Yeah, totally. Um, let's talk individual grades. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, a lot of areas will be the five elevens just tend to be more endurancey, you know, and then as you get closer to five thirteen, it'll be more like really specific cruxes or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious what the climbing in Smith looks like through these individual grades. Yeah. If you're looking to climb five eleven on your trip to Smith, what are the specific things about five eleven and Smith that you should be on the lookout for? Uh can we start at five ten? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, I think 510 is kind of like the formative Smith Rock grade. Okay. Um, the 5.8s and 5.9s are all little slabby, big nubbins, um, hard to fall off of, but mm-hmm. kind of scary. Uh, so you're going to kind of get nervous. Uh, the 5.10s start being that classic vertical mm. crimpers. Um, the bolts are a little spaced out. So it's kind of gonna- rare to find too. Like, what do you mean? I mean, just in other areas, five tens that are like these perfect faces. Oh yeah. Yeah. And Smith is packed with them for sure. Nice. It's, it's not, it's not particularly fun grade to climb at Smith and neither is five eleven mm-hmm. because they are these vertical, small crimper, perfect face climbing faces. And the, the developers of Smith rock were good rock climbers right? and they are coming from a trad ethos and they were coming from like more of like an ego side of it, I guess. Sure. And they're like, yeah, it's easy rock climbing. You don't need a lot of bolts. Right. Um, and some of them were put up ground or put were developed ground up mm-hmm. uh, with trad gear. So the bolts went where the trad gear was. Have and so have your, your head game together a little bit. You have to have your head game together. Um, fantastic rock climbs. You have like, Barbecue the Pope, which is a mid grade ten, um, but it's spacey, you know. Every and it, it's highly trafficked, so it's a little mm-hmm. greasy, um, and you have to trust your feet. And then you have like um, for eleven, I think the classic eleven would be Ring of Fire. Uh, it's like a notch up. It's just like Barbecue the Pope, notch up. Um, it sounds like. It sounds like as you're going up the grades, because we've talked about the main style of Smith, so it sounds like there's, at every grade level, it's kind of the same style, and Mm -hmm. it just builds on itself. Yeah. Which is really cool. That's one of the things I appreciate about Lander, is that you'll find monos on 510. Yeah. You know, so you can build up to that. You don't just jump into... Oh no. Amano. I've been climbing on mini jugs all the way up to 513 and now all of a sudden I have to pull on a mono. No, that's totally true. Mm-hmm. Every I I feel that every route at Smith will teach you some, <clears throat> excuse me, I just bit my lip. Uh teach you something that will help you at the next grade. Awesome. Like really. 
like really and truly, if you climb consciously at a grade, you'll learn the skill, the tools you need for the next one. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, like ring of fire. It's got probably a V five boulder problem on it for 11 D I think. Um, and it's just thin crimpers up until then. And then we got a boulder problem and then crimpers on, on by. Is that pretty typical of Smith at all grades where it's really cruxy, really defined or are there grades where it's more, more often it's just a, you know, a continuous resistance sort of a climb? Um, I would say that Smith Rock is more cruxy than anything else. Got it. Yeah. Uh, Do you think yeah. at any of the grades there's something specific that sort of changes or becomes more prevalent at that specific grade? Hmm. Um. I would say at at five ten, the holes you're using for your hands or the holes you're using for your feet. Uh, five eleven, it's probably your feet are going to get a little bit smaller. Mm-hmm. Uh, hands are going to be the same size. Feet are going to start diminishing. Five twelve, you're going to start getting like very defined cruxes, mm. um, and a little bit more technical as well you might have to hang and figure them out and work things through. Right. Uh, harder to read, harder to read and very specific sequences. Um, five thirteen, the feet are going to get pretty darn bad and it's gonna, you're going to start getting into like the mid mid grade or, or higher end boulder problems like V seven V six. Um, and maybe a couple of them in the route. Got it. Yep. And then 514 just seems like a 514 continuation there's a, on there. There's a giant breadth of different types of 514 at Smith. Cool. Um, you have uh, to bolt or not to be. Yep. And that's 110 feet of, people say V4, but I think they're lying. I think it's like 110 <laughs> feet of V6. I think it's like real <laughs> consistent V6, V5 climbing with a couple like V sevens in there, but it's, it's, it's probably one of the most consistent routes at Smith. Mm. Um, and then you have routes like, uh, um, bad man, <clears throat> excuse me, bad man that have probably like a V seven and a V eight and then another V seven on it. Uh, and then you have like big R on the front side has, it's like, 512a some of the best 512a rock climbing Mm. to like a v9 and then um more 512 rock climbing to like a v7 nice so if you're climbing at that grade you can sort of pick your poison there Mm -hmm. yeah i think any any of the grades you can kind of pick and choose yeah um i mean as long as you're okay grabbing little holds Mm -hmm. you're not gonna find like a steep jug haul yeah anywhere since things aren't super steep, I'm curious, um, like the people coming from the red or Maple Canyon or, you know, places that have fixed draws everywhere. Mm -hmm. What is the fixed draw situation? Um, pretty much anything above five thirteen. Uh, if it's a classic, it's going to have fixed draws on it. Got it. Um, we have a couple, a couple trolls that come through and steal draws I've, occasionally i've heard of this yeah. but uh but pretty much they'll all have fixed draws on them got it. Uh, especially agrigully totally fixed um churning which is like everybody's first 513 that they want to do totally fixed um yeah yeah there's a couple 12s with fixed draws but pretty much 13 on up what's the what's the aret uh chain reaction chain reaction is fixed. That fixed yep for sure. Is that that's your, only... your opinion? Uh huh. Your opinion on chain reaction. Does it, it climb as good as it photographs? It is the steepest slab climb I've ever <laughs> rock climbed. It, it's like pretty steep, but it climbs like a slab. Interesting. It's really weird. Cool. Yeah. It's like a bunch of high step rockovers and perches and like balancing reach, reach reach outs or reach arounds or, Mm -hmm. and then there's a dyno at the end. So 
slide Crazy. Dino. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. You got that. Like, that makes it worth climbing just to figure out what in the hell you're talking about. Dude, it is a lot of what in the hell is going on on that route climb. And it's so short. It's like 35 feet. Yeah. And it's all like. But probably the most photographed rock climb yeah. in the country. Yeah. Maybe yeah. the world. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of Instagram photographs now. That's true. So it might be changing, but. That's true. Most photographed by an actual camera by that film. doesn't double as a phone. Yes. Yeah. The most film <laughs> slide. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the technology is. Uh, what's, the, what's the local beta like? like? Local beta. Are there rainy day crags? Uh, it doesn't rain at Smith. Okay. Well, then we don't need rainy yep. day crags. Yeah. It is. Uh, it will rain, but Smith dries out incredibly fast. Got um, it. So you can kind of just wait it out. Yeah. Is there like a local climbers hangout, like a bar or a yep. restaurant? Yeah, or... uh, there's Red Point Climbing, which is a gear store, but they have uh, some taps, really good beer, kombucha. Um, you might start doing breakfast burritos. Nice. Um, if you want a little bit more space, uh, the Terrabon Depot is right there. And it's like nice restaurant right on train tracks, excellent food. Um I don't know why I said right on train tracks. It's, but it is. It's the depot, and uh, yeah, good beer, good food, um, tables, sit down style. Nice. I'd recommend that. Yeah. How how close to like the city of Bend is Smith? It is thirty three minute drive. Thirty three. Um, yeah, you've, you've done that a few times. Many many times. <laughs> exactly thirty three. Um, yes, it's like thirty miles away, sixty five miles an hour road. Um, and yeah, it's just a straight shot. You'll go, it, uh, Smith is in Terrebonne. You'll go through Redmond, which would be, uh, the closest like big grocery store. Uh, the grocery store in Terrebonne actually has really good steaks for not a lot of money. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Beta. If it's labeled St. Helens, get, get that steak. Get it. It's really good. As, as a, f do you consider yourself a former chef or are you always a chef? Uh, I've never considered it um, former. I'm going with former chef. All right. So yep. as a former chef, mm -hmm. if you had to pick one, like I'm going to spend some money dinner between mm -hmm. Terrebonne, Redmond, and Bend, mm -hmm. what would the restaurant be? Um, Terrebonne would be the Terrebonne Depot. Um, they do a good job. Uh, I haven't been in there recently because of COVID. Um but I'm sure they're still cooking good food. Yeah. Um, in Bend, in Redmond, there's not a lot going on. Um, they're not really known for their food. It's not uh, a cuisine town. No, that's where the <laughs> Rhino Shop is. Come say hi. Um, that's that's chefing. You're that is chefing. In there. Yeah, I'm cooking soup, <laughs> <laughs> soup and salad dressing all day. Um, I personally like this place called Sora Sushi. Uh, it's a sushi go around kind of joint. Mm -hmm. um, like right with now, the belt that yep. the sushi runs yeah, on. Just, they're cool. not doing the belt right now because yeah. of regulations, sure. but you can order online and go pick it up. And I think their rice is excellent and their fish is pretty good. And it's not super expensive for sushi. Yeah. Um, in Bend, uh, I like Worthy Brewing. Uh, they do great burgers. Their tacos are excellent and their beer is really good. Um, we don't go to like nice dining. Mm -hmm. It just, if I'm going to eat like a steak or nice piece of fish, I'll cook it at home. Um, but Ina is a food cart. So come to your house. Come to my house. Yeah. Look me up. <laughs> look me up. I'll charge you. I'll charge you 50 bucks for a steak. <laughs> um, Ina, we have great food cart scene. So Ina is a oh, Poke Bowl nice. food cart at yeah. a really good brewery called Bevel. Um, that would be my recommendation. And then there's a new food cart spot called Crosscut. And it's really nice, like dark wood, big leather back chairs, really cool spot to hang out. And there's a curry cart there that's really good too. Hmm. Cool. That's my All experience. the beta. Yep. I'm going to have to listen to this episode again before I go to Smith. Write it down. <laughs> Uh, favorites. We're going to put you on the spot here. Okay. And you have to tell me your absolute favorites. I'm going to give you 
three since you're solo on this one. All right. The top three favorite roots in Smith. Okay. My number one top favorite is ozone. Um, it's an unpopular opinion, <laughs> but I love that rock, uh, that rock climb. I think it embodies Smith rock, rock climbs in, in uh, a very compact route. Hmm. It's probably, I don't know, it's probably 30, 40 feet tall, uh, but the feet are horrendous and the body position and body tension is just, you have to be impeccable. And the holds are just like single pad laybacks to single pad Gastones mm. to like a pocket. And it's just, I love that route. I think it's excellent. Yeah. Um, I love fitting together shapes like that when you're forced into a specific body yeah. position and you have to fit all these shapes together. Yeah. You're like making, <sighs> I mean, you talk about the box and you're like pushing on all edges of that box to right. get up this thing. Cool. I, yeah. I think that's the best. And if you're a, a badass there's like a v11 start to it that you can do instead and that's called jam master j i think nice um so that bumps it up quite a bit so i have to ask mm -hmm. because the direct start is jam master j mm -hmm. is ozone named after the break dancer i have no idea ah we should find out yeah okay that's other a good question. Two other favorites. Uh, two other favorites. Um, uh, Vicious Fish. It's incredible. 12D? Uh, 13C. Oh, I'm way off. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just full value, full rope length. Eh, it's not a full rope length. Well, depends what size your rope is, I guess. <laughs> Uh, use a 70 meter Everything rope. is a full rope yeah, length yeah. if you have a short enough rope. If you started climbing <laughs> in uh, the 90s, mm. it is more than a full rope length. <laughs> if you started climbing last mm. week, it is a full rope length. Um, <laughs> it's excellent. It's hard, technical. Uh, it's like uh, Smith Rock has a lot of arets, and it's like your uh, PhD thesis for ret rock climbing. Mm, it's cool. really good. Um, and then what else? I might only have two that I like. Um, I really you only like two roots. <laughs> yeah. <in Smith. laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I talk a lot of shit about Smith, uh, even though it is really good. It's just, I've climbed there a lot. Um, let's see one more. Let's, let's You've try earned the right to talk shit though. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. If you ever, see me in person and you ask me questions about Smith, I'll probably talk shit about it. But I want to revert back to the beginning of the podcast where I said <laughs> it's the best of its style in the world. Yeah. Um, I oh, there's this 5.8 uh, over on Phoenix Buttress. And I think it's called like JT's route or something like mm. that. It's awesome. It's like ledges like good ledges and then it goes into this open dihedral and it's technical stemming but you got jugs and then it's like a little committing at the end mm. it's excellent so it's just really do route. it doesn't make the list um i mean i haven't been on that enough to nor to bolt nor to bolt no okay no I'm, you know when i first started rock climbing at smith uh, I thought Tabolt was going to be like my style. Yeah. Um, or maybe even when I was a kid, like when I was in my low twenties, right. That would probably have been like my go-to just like one degree overhanging, mm -hmm. just crimpers. But God, that thing beat me down. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it anymore. I'm also a fan of, and I know this is an unpopular opinion, but I try not to let the history of the root influence how good i think it is mm -hmm. because yeah. there are some really historical roots that are just terrible yeah oh for <laughs> sure for sure yeah uh i had a really good day on to bolt uh with dan mersky and i was like doing really well and i was like oh, i think i can get this it was the first day where i was like oh i think i can rock climb this rock climb and i think he was taking a lot of weight off Mm, with the rope yeah yeah here's actually you just reminded me of something um 
a local beta mm-hmm. that we should have maybe mentioned because I've heard this from multiple people that it's pretty common to top rope things yep. first at Smith. Yeah, for sure. It's so technical and the bolts are not close together. Um, so a lot of it is you having, I say it a lot is like settling into the route. Yeah. And for me, that was, for me, um, that was always the most important part was getting that like mental side kind of dialed yeah. and being comfortable in the rests and being comfortable in the cruxes, mm-hmm. being comfortable with, with <clears throat> the runouts. Um, so I, yeah, top roping, get a big, long stick clip, uh, yeah. and, and do not be afraid to stick clip your way up a route. Man, I think that stuff is so important, especially in a day and age where it's like egos can kind of rule the day a lot mm-hmm. of the time and people can, people often feel embarrassed if they're top roping something or stick st- clipping their way up something. I and, still feel embarrassed sometimes. Yeah. And I'm, I'm more and more all for it. I will throw yeah. top, top ropes down, big boulders with no shame and I would go top roping at Smith all day long. Yeah, I think if if you're really looking to like push the grade and it's not steep, so it's not hard to stick clip up something. Right. But if you're looking to push a grade, like you're going to have to work a move over and over and over. And if you can't get there, like mm-hmm. there's no there, there's no point. I think there's a certain point where you like stick clip up the route, lower down, try the moves in whatever whatever order you want, try the crux. And then you start doing the parts. For me, the beta was you start doing the parts you can do. Right. And then you work your way into the part that you can't do. And then one day you get really lucky and do that part you can't do. And you've got the rest. And then you got it. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of being like, oh, well, there's no point working the top till I get the crux. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work out. That's really good beta. Especially when you're, when you have the ability to top rope or yep. stick clip your way up pretty easily. Yeah. There's not a lot of walk into the top of the crag <clears throat> right. to get that top rope up, but big long stick clip, like 15 foot minimum. Yeah. That'll get you up. You might've already answered the next two. Um, Ooh. Must do like the, the one that embodies the area. Are you going with ozone for that? No. Uh, okay. <laughs> no. I mean, no. Yes, but no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Give, me, is, give me another then. It is, but it's not like it's not like happy joy I uh, did yeah. ozone. It's kind of like tucked in this corner. Um I mean, you have like churning. Mm-hmm. And it's it's actually not it's not super uh on par for the rest of the routes. Does churning have the big rose move? Yep. Uh no. <laughs> no. What has the no, rose move? That is um, that I've seen a million photos. Rude of. boys. Rude boys. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. That mm. that could go on that list of must do. Excuse me. If you're climbing 13C, that would be a must do for sure. Because it's got everything. Turning 13A. Everybody's Turning 13A. First yep. 13A. And got if you're it. climbing 13A uh, and you're doing churning, you might as well just do churning in the sky, which adds an extra. I don't know, extra 40 feet. And it's just fantastic 512 rock climbing. Mm. You don't get any extra credit for it. Uh, it's still 13A, but uh, it's really good. And the crux up there is just fantastic. Yeah, you just get extra happiness. Super extra happiness and a better view. Awesome. Yep. Uh, overlooked classic. Overlooked classic. What's the one nobody does, but everybody should? That's a toughie. Um, it's such a busy area that I don't know if there's overlooked classics anymore. Oh, um, chemicals and coleslaw. Oh, that's a cool name. It's really good. It's 13 a, uh, it's on the front side, picnic lunch wall. And it's, you walk up to it and you're like, Oh, this isn't going to be that difficult. It looks like it has these tufas coming down and like, you'd be able to stem up it, but it is like wild. Hmm. Yeah. It's got this knob that you grab in every single different direction you can on your way up. You you pinch it, you you pull down on it, then you pinch it, then you side pull it, then you undercling and pull out on it. Nice. So it's yeah, it's pretty neat. It was well set. 
whoever just listened will <laughs> no longer get the on-site. <laughs> just blew it. Yeah. I'm going to have yeah. to put How a... much beta do you need to not get the on-site? That's a good question. That needs to be explored. Yeah. <laughs> what if the name of the root gives away something about the crux? Do you still get the on-site? Like mm. heinous crimp. Mm. That's not that specific though. Okay. If it if it was named like like at bolt three, drop knee and reach high, <laughs> that that would be That's a little a horrible bit more name. addictive. <laughs> <laughs> that would be yeah, you would just have to change that name. Yeah, agreed. All right. Uh favorite rest day activity if you're on a trip to Smith. Oh. Um there are a couple falls, steelhead falls. Uh, it's pretty close. Um, you can jump off cliffs into water. It's not the warmest water, but it's pretty good. Um, you can take the beer tour around Bend. Mm. There's probably like 30 breweries or something. Really? Yep. Cool. Uh, there's a cycle pub. So uh, I'd like to call it the pubsicle. Um, <laughs> That's a it, great name. <laughs> it's, it's really annoying if you're a local <clears throat> because you get stuck behind this thing where 10 people are pedaling and it's going like 10 miles an hour. Uh, but you can... You can ride it to all the pubs. Oh, nice. And drink. Yep. Yeah. And then somebody else drives. So technically, you're powering the machine, but you're not driving. That's a great first rest day of two yes. activity. Yeah. Because then you can, I've always, <laughs> we have this. Uh, then you, you can sober up, your legs can get some legs rest. Legs can heal. Yeah. Yeah. It, oh, do squats and deadlifts if you're going to go to Smith mm. because we kind of glossed over that whole like, hip mobility thing. Yep. Uh, a lot of high stepping, a lot of frogger foot, um, a lot of keeping your hips really calves, really calves in. get sore. Yes. Calves get real yeah. sore. Yep. Um, don't skip leg day. Don't skip leg day. Double down. Uh, back to the cycle pub. Um, we have this butte called uh, pilot butte and I've always wanted to bicycle up it and then ride the cycle pub down. <laughs> have yet so if you have a group of nine i'll jump on with you and let's do it nice i like this plan and and where can people find you if they want to either you can't find me stop and visit rhino or if they want to hit you up for a cycle pub yeah down pilot beat uh rhino skin solutions.com uh justin at rhino skin solutions rhino skin solutions on instagram um or we have a new spot mm. in redmond uh, you can look it up on Google. I'm not going to give you the address cause it's yeah. long. Awesome. And, uh, yeah. Last riddle for you. Ooh. What is the number one top rhino skin solutions product that people will need if they're climbing at Smith? Uh, there is no answer for that. <laughs> um, because everybody is different. Uh, repair cream for sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if you are repair is my number one always. Yeah. I just, yeah, that would be the one go to, um, if you have super dry hands and you're glassy spit, uh, is a great product. There's a few people who will stash a spit in like resting pockets really and reapply. Yep. Nice. And then I am definitely a spit fan these days coming from mm. climbing in the red I was a dry fan. Interesting. Now I'm a spit fan because my skin gets too dry out here. Just because it's so high and dry yep. up here. Oh, wow. Yeah. I guess at the red, you have like so much more contact. Tons of friction. Yep. Yeah. It's just going to dig in. Yeah. Um, dry spray, I would say for Smith. Uh, I, I was going to say performance, but uh, I like this little bit of beta and I want to get it out there. Uh, dry spray, if you have sweaty hands and your fingertips are so important at smith that the best way to go is spray the dry spray onto a plate and then rub your fingers on the plate and that gets all your pads mm, i like this you're gonna have to sell rhino branded plates, plates. oh maybe frisbees finger yeah that's a good idea rhino Double. fingertip Redundancy. frisbees yeah <laughs> finger yep all right, All right, awesome. What's the name? And uh, you guys can find us at powercompanyclimbing.com. You can find us on the Instagrams, Facebooks, where you can also, you can find Rhino on the Instagrams. Are you guys on Facebook? Uh, barely. Yeah, same here. Yeah, Rhino Skin Solutions. 
Yeah, you can still find us there, but we're barely ever there. We got banned um, and then unbanned, so we're back. <laughs> Why did you get banned? Because we were trying to sell uh, hand sanitizer at the beginning of uh, uh, this COVID thing, and uh, they didn't trust us. Oh, um, they, they swatted you down. Yeah, yeah. Damn it, Facebook. I was like, we're real. <clears throat> I'll send you some, but but we're back. We're back on the Facebook. Coincidentally, though, I love the little tiny bottles of hand sanitizer because I, like I can it. just keep them everywhere. And so. make, make dirty rock climbers smell good. Yeah, so thank you for that. And uh, you should be telling your friends all about your next trip to Smith Rocks on the Twitter. We will not see it there because <laughs> we don't tweet. We scream like eagles. <laughs> This time, 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 this time